Hey folks, you and I know about sin, right? You know about sin. Sin is whenever we're imperfect in following God's ordinances. Sin is whenever we are imperfect, we are not perfect doing the things that God asked us to do. Whenever we do the things that God asks us not to do. Sin is often shown to us through, through the Old Testament. The Ten Commandments is a great list of things that we're supposed to avoid and a couple of things that we're supposed to do. But the Ten Commandments is followed up throughout the book of Deuteronomy, Numbers, Leviticus, with a whole bunch of other things, a whole bunch of other rules we are to follow. Things that we are to do and things that we are not to do. And these, for what it's worth, happen to be the ones that I think generally we get we get slapped around with. Some Christians in the church today seem to be primarily focused on, on a few things, a few things that they consider to be abominations, a few things that they tell us God considers to be an abomination. One is that, that whole role Wade thing. The other, another, is who's using what bathroom? Another one is, who's fallen in love with who? And are they married? Do they live together? What are they doing in their bedroom? Now these things, well, one of them is mentioned in the Bible, specifically. We've talked about it on a couple of our videos here. But these, these seem to be the hot, hot button issues for for many Christians in the world. These are the things that we are desperate to make sure that everybody stops doing. These are the things that we are, we are desperate to change legislation and change laws in order, to, in order to prevent this kind of behavior, prevent these kinds of things from happening. But whenever I have a conversation with people about these particular issues, and they are vehemently, passionately concerned about these particular issues. I ask the question of why these particular issues? Why these issues and not others? Why are these the most important ones but others are not? Now, that's not, necess that's not necessarily true of all things. We know that murder, for example, is a big no-no in our world. Theft is a big no-no in our world. Working on Saturday doesn't seem to hold the same weight that it used to. Honoring our mother and father doesn't seem to hold the same weight that it used to. Not having false idols doesn't seem to carry the same weight that it used to. Adultery doesn't carry the same weight that it used to. Coveting doesn't carry the same weight that it used to. You get the idea. But one thing in particular bothers me is that we don't seem to apply the same weight to the commands that Jesus gave us as we do to those Levitical commands, those Mosaic laws. We seem to hold those particular issues as high important laws, rules, values, ideals, principles, but we don't hold the things that Jesus told us to do with that same passion. When Jesus told us to love our neighbors as ourselves, it wasn't a suggestion. He was telling us to do something. And yet, that doesn't seem to bother us. When we fail to do that, it doesn't seem to bother us as much as who somebody's living with, who somebody has married. Where Jesus told us to take care of the widows and the orphans, to visit the sick and the dying, to visit the prisoners, to take care of the vulnerable. To see him in them. 
we don't seem to hold that command, that instruction, as preciously as we do what bathroom somebody is using. Or what a woman chooses to do with her body. It is and should be considered a sin that there are hungry people in our world. The sin of us believers, those of us who aren't doing anything to help. It is and should be considered a sin that we have communities that don't have access to fresh drinking water, that it must be trucked in. That's on us. We have focused on trying to curb people's behaviors and we failed to focus on taking care of them, taking care of them in this world. Now, it could easily be said, well, yes, but one is a matter of their soul and the other is just a matter of their body. But if you don't win the battle of trying to take care of them in this physical world, you will never, ever, ever reach their soul. If we as church do not make ourselves available to take care of their physical needs in this world, they will never allow us, they will never hear us when we speak, when we attempt to take care of their spiritual life. They'll never let us get close enough to take care of their soul. I would argue that the sin of failing to love our neighbors as we love ourselves has greater consequences than the sin of who they love, who they marry, what they do with their body. Jesus' commands God's commands were for us to behave in certain ways. It wasn't for us to ensure others behave in certain ways. It was for us to behave in certain ways, for us to do certain things. Jesus tells us clearly, worry about your own stuff before you involve yourself in others. If we do what we were instructed to do by our master. We will make the lives of others better, easier, more joyful and vibrant. We'll make the world a better place. And as we do that, we will share Christ with the world. We will share the love of God with the world. We will share the gospel with the world. And as the gospel is shared with all those we encounter, the gospel will transform the world, just like the gospel transformed us. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face be made to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord's countenance be lifted up to you. May you always know the peace of being in the Lord's presence. I pray if sin is such a priority for us, let us focus especially on what Jesus told us to do for our neighbors. Amen.